So how do you feel about the uh, Manny Diaz hire? I, you know, uh, so I've been there since the Randy Shannon era, and I don't think there's a head coach that has been as hyped on the fan base has been so corralled on him than anyone else. There was quite some hype with the Mark Richt, but it was kind of like a desperation call answered. This one seems like the 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 finish line call the the guy the the man the I mean his dad was the mayor of Miami and I remember all of that and even my parents who have no clue what football as I said yeah you know we have Manny Diaz I said oh yeah we know his dad you know that's the guy so uh, I'm I'm really high on him I love how he's talking and I don't know if you saw his recent uh, video but he's he's quite the spokesman you know he it doesn't have to be just football but uh, he talks with. Uh, a goal in mind and very smart and wise and very, he seems very real, you know? Um, and just this energy, it's, it's nothing says better Miami than Manny Diaz. And we're, I'm just excited to see what he can do for us. Uh, yeah. Uh, I certainly don't want to take away from uh, Mark Richt because obviously he's a cane. So, so he, uh, I don't want to make a separation as the, him not being a fit because right. he did play there at the school and is an alum, but uh, you know, fast forwarding just... to 2019, there seems to be some separation between the way he leads a football program and uh, what Miami's reputation is and what seems to be the fit for the school and Mark Richt, uh, as you say, it was a bit of a safe choice. Uh, even though it didn't turn out that way, you would think uh, Mark Richt, based on his success at Georgia, is uh, going to lead a program in a certain manner and they're going to be competitive. But I uh, made a few missteps, I think, uh, in the last year and a half that cost him. Yeah, and I think where it really started with the fan base kind of distance from him is – we were loving the record in 2017. There's no doubt about it. And we we're called the cardiac canes, which we're kind of iffy about with such close, amazing games. But uh, it was a Florida state game that, you know, the players are up there, you know, stomping on the field on the Seminole. And he said, no, 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 get off this. We have class, which that's, that's just Mark Rick. And there's nothing against that. But then M Miami's known for being the bad boys for everyone hating on us and us, you know, giving it back. So that's, it was just, it was different. Whereas I don't think Manny Diaz will be disrespectful in any, any way. In fact, Florida State is his alma mater, but you know, uh, he conducts himself in the Jimmy Johnson type of different era. And that's what Miami wants to bring back, but him branding it as the new Miami instead of go to the olden days, which are no more is very fascinating and, uh, creative and just, uh, genius in my opinion, really genius. Uh, the boys hit the field first on March 19th. So we're about three weeks in, what has really stood out to you? Um, well, the, first off, the coaches. You know, we knew that Dan Enos was a splash hire. We wanted a home run hit. And just just hearing him talk, he's very educated and goal-oriented. Um, it's not just coach talk. He knows what he's doing and how to improve quarterbacks. We thought that's what we'll get based on his past resume, but hearing him and how he improves these quarterbacks, it's, it's exciting. There's a lot of work to do. Um, but his standard, the other thing was the big cane. Uh, we were not expecting that, which is basically a one-on-one -on -one drill where he's had anybody go against each other. It doesn't matter if you're a quarterback, a punter, a kicker, heck, a graduate assistant. Um, they just go at it, and it's to prove to the locker room and their strength and work, um, and he just wants to create competition and, uh, you know, a, in a Miami style of way. So it's been uh, – that's really been kind of not expected at a spring practice. That's caught my attention. Uh, what it's come to the, you know, actual position battles. Um, I think it's been interesting what's going on with the D line, basically who's the best of the best. Um, and we don't even have Trayvon Hill coming in or Chigosi Naruka. They come in after the summer, but even now um, uh, our, our lineman coach thinks, look, the number one team is probably the best in the country. It's the number two team that, you know, wins the game, which, if you think about it, the depth and they're being very, very high on guys that have been there for a while, but never made a name, you know, and Scott Patchum uh, and Ger uh, and Ford being very, very well and efficient in their practice and a high work ethic. Um, that's been quite uh, interesting and promising. Um, the quarterback battle is just one day you hear that man Williams is on fire. The next day, Perry's doing well. Then it's like they're both doing not so well. And it's been for two weeks. Tate is not throwing good balls. And then 
he's doing amazing. He stepped up and it's, it's peaks and valleys. Like, you know, said, you just, you don't know, you would hope you kind of, kind of get a lean somewhere, but it's competitive though. Uh, and all the wide receiver players are very high on them. Um, so it's, it's good to see that. Whereas before uh, Diaz came in it just, you had Perry and Williams possibly departing. It would have been just him, honestly. And it'd been a little bit of a desperation call, um, similar to, I think Florida state's quarterback situation. Um, now that they obviously they got the transfer, which is kind of an interesting pickup, but, uh, those have been like the kind of big highlights that have really, uh, surprised me and have been uh, something to watch on. Um, constantly my fans are telling me like, how about that O-line? How is that O-line? And look, our D-line is going to look make any O-line look bad. It's just going to. Um, and some people are really high on like team two guys, but they're going against team two guys. You know, they'll look good in spring practice when that happens. But uh, Butch Berry, is a, you know, he's an NFL guy, and the players are really impressed with him and how he's conducting and pushing them. And they've had, I think, one or two good days so far out of eight spring practices as a line, but it hasn't seemed like the offense as a whole came together at the same time. And that's just something that's, you, you got to watch out. Cause you, you know, you, it's great to see the O line doing well and running back and then your quarterback's not throwing well or your wide receivers not catching it. And so uh, they're all screaming consistency all the time, but uh, they, that's what spring practice is getting that all together. You know um, they're only 50 to 60% of their offensive system there. So um, that's just a couple of notes that have caught my attention so far up till now.